The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. And after a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat the fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but no one gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, you swallowed up, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fatted calf. And he said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. You know, one thing we always have to remember is that when we hear sacred scripture, we know that it's a message for right now, okay? It's not just a story <clears throat> that was told nearly 2,000 years ago and uh, we're just recalling it over and over again. No, it's Jesus addressing us directly here today. And today we do hear a very familiar and beautiful parable that's one's very familiar to us. And we hear it on this Sunday called Laetare Sunday. Here we are right smack in the middle of Lent, particularly this year, especially during this Jubilee year of mercy. And, and in this day, we take sort of a little time out to focus our, take our focus away somewhat from our personal repentance, our acts of prayer and almsgiving that we've been doing during Lent. This time when we abandon the Alleluia's and, and the Gloria, but we celebrate today the joy of our redemption. We celebrate the joy that we experience of our God's mercy and forgiveness and how we are all called to share in that joy as we share our mercy with others. You know, technically today we're supposed to wear pink or rose colored vestments, 
Uh, but we don't have a full set of them. And I told Father John, besides, we look like two bottles of Pepto-Bismol standing up here if we had pink robes on. But I will tell you today, I did find a pink stole that I could wear underneath of this to at least celebrate. And as we said, Father, real men don't mind wearing pink, right? <laughs> but today we hear a very strong and a very profound parable, the parodical son. Sometimes it's referred to as the story of the merciful father. We know it well. We've heard it many times. And Jesus uses this story to reveal to us the infinite mercy of the father. That God is overjoyed. He's overjoyed to run out and meet us with a hug and celebration when we return home to him. That he says to us, there's no sin great enough to separate us from God's love and mercy when we recognize and admit our wrongdoing, when we ask for forgiveness and we convert our hearts to God's will. See, he was also letting the Pharisees know why he was called to dine with the sinners. We hear the gospel begin them complaining that he's sitting with sinners. Well, we're the ones who need his forgiveness and mercy. That's why he dines with us. And I'd like to sum up this gospel with a few key words that we can maybe take and remember that really happen over and over again in our lives, but are embodied in this great story. And those words are, I call them the six R's so we can remember them, but they're relationship, rejection, reality, repentance, reconciliation, and rejoicing. That's the story of the prodigal son. We know there's a relationship between the sons and their father that there's a rejection of that relationship by the son and that he strikes a current reality in his life that brings him to understand the need for repentance. And then he finds reconciliation with his father. And as a result of that, a rejoicing and a celebration of that reconciliation. But in the details of this parable, we see typical family dynamics exposed all over. We certainly learn of the father's love for his sons, but we also learn about each of the two sons as well. And we can often find ourselves identifying with all three of the main characters of this story. We know that we are all called to be that father, to be merciful just as your heavenly father is merciful. Sounds familiar. We end our mass with that prayer. But we must also be, as we heard in our second reading today, we must be the ambassadors of God's mercy. St. Paul tells us all about that. We have to be willing to show mercy and forgiveness to anyone who has offended us. Those who trespass against us, sounds familiar again? And I could tell you that this week in our RCIA, we'll be talking about the Lord's Prayer. And I can guarantee that the most difficult part of that prayer for anyone to understand who's studying our faith is the issue of forgiveness. Not the idea, not the idea of asking for forgiveness, but the concept of forgiving others. See, that question always comes up. How can I ever forgive someone who's done such a terrible wrong to me or to someone that I love? And this is the greatest challenge of our Christianity. And we all too often can relate to that prodigal son when we might have, in a way, strayed away from God or from his church or away from any relationship when we thought we would seek happiness in places that really just turned out to be nothing but failure and disappointment. When we did also maybe wind up in that muddy mess with the pigs and come to our senses and sought forgiveness and mercy, mercy from God or mercy from those that we've offended. We might have experienced then that great inner peace and joy that came with forgiveness and reconciliation, maybe in the sacrament of reconciliation, or simply in the words of forgiveness and acceptance by someone we may have hurt, a new life given in second chances because mercy and forgiveness were offered. But many times we also find we're closer identified with the older brother, the less adventurous, maybe to some a more boring type who just kept doing what was right and didn't realize how much his father really loved him. 
He was worried about more what this good life he was leading. He was worried what it would eventually bring to him. And he was not at all worried about the welfare of his own lost brother. He was jealous and resentful of his father's mercy. And aren't we sometimes just like that? We do what we can to stay in God's grace. And we sometimes resent it when we see someone who has sinned and hurt another and then seeks mercy and forgiveness. We oftentimes want to impose great punishment on them and make them pay an inflated price for their offense. We surely don't want to see many times second chances and doses of mercy coming their way. But both the sons and so often even ourselves, we don't realize the extent that God loves us. The prodigal son, he learned of his father's love through his mercy and forgiveness. It was much more than he ever expected. And the older brother, he discovered it through his anger and his sulking and sort of feeling left out until he realized that everything the father had was his. He was doing the right thing in his life, but certainly with the wrong attitude. He had become mechanical in his actions of loyalty and he wasn't doing it out of love anymore. And isn't that sometimes true of us? Do we sometimes just keep a constant steady course in our lives and become accustomed to do things because we don't know any other way? Or are our lives truly lived in a constant reality and knowledge and an appreciation of all that God does for us and how he loves us? You know, we know how the story ends for the prodigal son. He's welcomed and celebrated back into his father's life. But we really don't know how it ends for the older brother, do we, when we hear this story? We can only speculate, and I can only hope, that due to the mercy and love of the father, that he put his arm around him and together they entered the house and they too joined in the celebration. But that happened once he came to know how much his father loved him. I wanna to speak to these young guys here for a minute. You know, this story is a bit heavy for us adults to listen to. But I want to leave you guys with a few thoughts, okay? You want to listen out for a little bit? First of all, you do a great job singing, so I appreciate that. That's more than anything else, right? I know there's a lot of young ones out there. We need you up here, too, to help their voices, okay? But a few things I want you to come away with with this story. Number one, and most important, your parents love you so much. Don't ever forget that. They love you for who you are, not always for what you do or what you don't do. They just unconditionally love you, okay? And they celebrate you every day because they love you. You know, we heard in this story that the father killed the fatted calf and took his son, had a great party. Well, we don't do that anymore today, right? But what do we do? Maybe you go to McDonald's and have a good time? I think that's real meat, but I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but regardless, if you get everything you want every day, which we don't always get everything, know that mom and dad loves you unconditionally, just like God loves you so much. That's the first thing we learn from this story. The second thing we have to learn is that you know, there are times we mess up, right? There may be times when you might disobey your parents or maybe you don't do things right all the time, fight with your brother or sister, or maybe you didn't study and you got a bad grade in school or you did something silly or foolish and you got in a little trouble. Don't be afraid to ever say, I'm sorry and I'll try not to do that again. See, because when you say that, because your parents love you so much, you'll always be forgiven. That's important to ask for that forgiveness, just like God forgives us when we ask him. If we do something wrong, don't ever be afraid to say, I'm sorry, okay? And the third thing, sometimes people do bad things to us, and they make us mad or sad, or they, they do things that hurt us. Someone does something that makes you feel sad, and they come to you later, they kind of realize they did you wrong, and they say, you know what, I'm sorry, I'll try never to do that again. Forgive them. See, because just like you were forgiven by your parents when you said, I'm sorry, I'll try not to do that again, you need to forgive other people who ask you that as well. Okay? Know that your parents love you. Never be afraid to say you're sorry. And always forgive everybody else who does you wrong. Okay? You going to remember that? All right, let me talk to these people for a little bit longer, all right? You guys do a great job. Very simple story because we know that these kids will always be happy. We'll all always be happy when we know how much God really loves us. 
But that's the simple message for us all today. You know, we know we all have certain issues in our families and among our friends. There's a lot of times just estrangements and not talking to someone for years and holding long-standing grudges in our lives. But this Lent, particularly in this year of mercy, let's work to be those ambassadors of God's mercy. Either seek the forgiveness of someone who we have offended or offer forgiveness to someone who has offended us. And I just want to read this little quote from Pope Francis, who he said this when he opened this holy year, this jubilee year of mercy. He said, this year will be a year in which we grow ever more convinced of God's mercy and how much wrong we do to God and his grace when we speak of sins being punished by his judgment before we speak of their being forgiven by his mercy. But the tr that is the truth. We have to put mercy before judgment. And in any event, God's judgment will always be in the light of his mercy. So let's allow the joy of mercy into our lives and into the lives of those who we're called to love. And we do it through our forgiveness. And all together soon we will be saying the Lord's Prayer. So let's try to really mean it, particularly when we get to that forgiveness part. God bless you.